Okay, we're back. We're live. I'm Jay Fidel. It's 11 o'clock rock here on a given Thursday. Uh, and we're calling call this Community Matters. But more than that, we're going to talk about climate change coming to Hawaii. And we're going to talk about a disaster recovery plan for uh, like you keep want to preserve our economy is the point. Because we have to, you know, preserve those things that earn the state a living. And Waikiki is that. So we need a plan by which we can restart our economy after a disaster. And for this discussion, we have Carl Kim. He's the executive director of NDPTC. I'm going to sing that now. The National Disaster Preparedness Training Center. I know that. It's okay. actually written on the inside of my eyeballs. Okay. He's also the chair of the... He's a national officer of ND and NDPTC. Well, actually of the National Domestic Preparedness Consortium. Okay, call it whatever you wish. Yes, right. he's, okay. he's national. And the organization yeah. he controls is national. Yes, yeah. yes. Okay, and joining him today is Rob Poro. He's a coastal engineer, which means an engineer that looks at the coast, and that's especially important. You know, I get in the elevator on the way up to the show, and somebody says, oh, it's really a hot, beautiful day. And I said to him what I always say. I say, yes, it is. One day closer to the next extreme storm. Just wait, coming soon. It is coming soon, isn't it? It's coming. It's, it's, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's the problem. So I have to prepare for it, and that's what you're all about. Mm -hmm. You've served in this position for three years, mm -hmm. and I hope you stay active in it, mm -hmm. and I hope it continues to be operated right here, Fort Street, across the street from us, a national organization across the street. And you're here in the studio talking to me. Huh. Oh, thank you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so what is NDP? The, this is the National Disaster Preparedness Training Center, and we're an organization housed at the University of Hawaii, but funded by the Department of Homeland Security in FEMA. We're a national organization, and what we do is we develop FEMA-certified training courses for state and local government and emergency managers and first responders. And to date, uh, we've trained more than 31,000 people across the U.S. in uh, more than 500 cities and towns. And who so are they? Uh, who are the people we've trained? Uh, emergency managers, first responders, uh, people that are involved in disaster response, police, recovery, fire. police, fire, EMS, public works, uh, transportation agencies, uh, others that would be called in in the event of a, of a disaster or uh, emergency. So what's your relationship with FEMA then? Well, uh, we're a trusted agent of FEMA. We develop uh, training courses uh, for FEMA. Uh, we work closely. You train with FEMA. FEMA. Yeah, well, yeah. We we've trained for FEMA. Uh, we've had uh, we we tr but we primarily work with state and local governments, uh, tribal entities, uh, also in, in the territories uh, and the flag and trust territories as well too. What do you train them about? Uh, preparedness, uh, preparedness for uh, hazards. We have a special focus on natural hazards. Uh, in part because we have so many different uh, natural uh, hazards and threats in Hawaii. So it's not just extreme weather, it's lots of disasters. Lots of uh, lo many, many different yeah, uh, How do you uh, sleep disasters. at night, you know? <laughs> sort of the king of disasters, or, right. or the king of disasters, right. as it may be. <laughs> right. Uh, it, yeah, it, this, is a, this is a growth area. It's a growth, a growth, growth, oh, nice. growth industry. <laughs> right, right, right. Um, and, 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 but part of it is that I have a great team, uh, and uh, Rob is, is part of our team. He's got a really interesting background as an engineer, and, and uh, he's worked on, on projects uh, throughout the country. And, and uh, Rob, why don't you say a little bit about your yeah, background? Yeah, what do you do, and, and how do you know Carl? Uh, well, Carl uh, gave me the opportunity of, of uh, getting a master's degree in urban and regional planning. Um, at UH. At, at UH, yeah, Carl He's a planner advisor. right there. He's, he's an academician, too. In fact, it began with being an academician. So he was your teacher. He was. He was my advisor. Yes. Okay. So prior my, to that, my teacher too. In the, yeah. In prior ways. to that, I was I was in the Navy. Actually, I spent some time in the Navy as an engineer, uh, civil engineer, and then decided to go back to grad school and really pursue working with the coast again. And that's that's where Carl comes. So your degree is a degree in engineering. Yeah, my undergraduate planning. degree was coastal engineer, and then um, my master's in coastal planning. Oh, very interesting. It's perfect for this situation, especially in Hawaii. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we have a real interesting team. You know, I brought in our meteorologists, our weather guys. We have geologists, Myth we have volcanologists, yeah. and all kinds yeah. of folks. And so that's part of the strength of our team. It's, it's very, multidisciplinary. It's multidisciplinary yeah. and uh, includes, you know, really talented uh, folks like Rob and, and others who are 
interested in the subject, as well as Hawaii, uh, as well as uh, other places as well. Too. So with these experts, you one, you develop courses where you're teaching people who mm -hmm. are first responders and who, who would have to stand up in the event of a disaster. Right. Uh, and then you're also making plans. Can you distinguish that for me? I mean, uh, exactly how, how is that different or the same? Well, a, a lot of what we do is uh, we develop our uh, coursework and our training programs based upon real places, real disasters, real experiences. Uh, and that's, uh, that, 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 that's what we're here to Evidence-based learning. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Because that way it's more grounded. Uh, and it makes a lot more sense than just being some sort of theoretical or textbook um, type of uh, case. And it also provides a way that we can invest back into uh, the community. And we have a, a, a range of different courses. Uh, many of our courses relate to the specific types of hazards, uh, volcanoes or tsunamis or hurricanes. What we, to do in the event of right. a disaster with this, that, right, or right, the other right. thing. Yeah, we also have tools-based courses. You know, like really? uh, we have a course on social media, uh, how to use social media. Oh. We have a course uh, uh, on UAVs. Uh, you know, I think your, your, your uh, buddy Ted uh, has been real That's involved. Ted Rolston he's talking about. Right, yeah. right. Uh, has been real involved with, uh, with, with that course. Um, we have a, a series of different uh, courses. And this latest one that we've been focusing on for FEMA, again, is on recovery planning. Because when we surveyed the literature and when we, based upon our experiences, that is a real gap in terms of our capabilities uh, and, and people really need to have more training and preparedness uh, to recover from all types of disasters and hazards. So this it sounds like there's a whole bunch of steps here. I mean, one is you have to, you have to know the disasters mm -hmm. and you have to make some kind of predictive analysis about right. what's going to happen and how bad it's going to be. And, who is it going to affect? Mm -hmm. And then you have to figure out, well, you know, if we have a disaster, which we haven't had before right. many times, right. Right. Uh, and maybe worse than we've ever had, um, then we have to figure out, you know, what is going to happen exactly, mm -hmm. and how is it going to affect the community? Right. Um, there's, there's a certain amount of predictive analysis in that. Right. Right. Uh, and then we have to figure out what people are going to do and what they're going to need mm -hmm. to rebuild. So you have to ultimately have a target of rebuilding. Mm -hmm. um, it's really interesting. You're going to... You know, in a bad disaster, you're going to remake the society. Mm -hmm. This is how do you sleep at night? Right. <laughs> yeah, and it's it's really about choices uh, as well too, and and trying to frame the different types of choices that one would have to make in the event of a catastrophic choices event. like what? Well, you build back exactly what you had before. Uh, do you build it back as quickly as as possible? Uh, do you make it stronger? Uh, do you make it? more energy efficient? Uh, uh, do you change the, the pattern of development? Uh, and so that's uh, a, a lot of what we're, we, we've been working on as well too. And so, uh, and, and this ties in with our other courses that are related to preparedness or uh, mitigation or, or other types of uh, activities related to um, preparing for disasters. Indeed, can I show that second slide? Well, uh, start with the first one if oh, you like. Well, I, we are, let's we go kinda, flipping through the slides here. We kind of talked our way through that first one. <laughs> <laughs> there, oh, yeah, there you go. This is this is this is what you you wanted some news, right? This is hot off the press. Uh, we've now trained thirty-one thousand, more than thirty-one thousand. I think think those blue dots represent the hometowns of the uh, first responders and emergency managers that we've trained across the country. Including in remote areas. In right? remote areas. And, yeah. and, and, I, and then uh, we've trained in something like 500 different uh, cities and towns. What's really interesting about this diagram, too, is those red areas there. Mm -hmm. Those show the number of federal disaster declarations by county that have been issued over this period uh, 20... Uh, well, real disasters. Right, 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 over, since 2010. Right, and, and so you can see that there's uh, uh, many, many types of uh, disasters that are occurring, primarily uh, natural disasters, yeah. uh, flooding, tornadoes, uh, weather-related uh, disaster, wildfires. But knowing so that, forth. you can do predictive analysis on whether right. and when and how it's going to happen again. Yeah. Right, right. And, and so this is, this, is, this is part of the work that, that we do. We analyze what the needs are and then try to design uh, courses that are appropriate to this. And, and, and in our assessment of, of what the needs are, what jumps out is the need for tr uh, training about recovery. Um, and there's a lot of training courses that we do on preparedness, uh, on response, uh, but actually very few 
uh, courses on recovery. Uh, on recovery. So then uh, we um, we're developed. We're working with FEMA, the National uh, Federal Emergency Management uh, Agency, to develop a FEMA certified training course uh, on on recovery. And and Rob is actually uh, one of the leads on on, on the development of that course. But they don't have right. they don't have coastlines in in um, in um, uh, Montana. Well, you can you can quote me on that. That's yeah. true. That's true. That's where my urban planning degree comes in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we are. So we are developing a, a disaster recovery planning course. The title of it is Community Planning for Disaster Recovery. So it focuses on the long term part of recovery, how to how um, a community will recover in the long term. And so the short term, the response type stuff we, we deal with in other courses, but this one really focuses on the long-term part of recovery. Well, part of that is going to be, um, you know, severity. So if it's not very severe, you know, if it's a smaller disaster than rather than a large one, I hate to put it in those terms, but, mm -hmm. um, you know, you have a different recovery plan. You have to recover different things. If it's a larger one, there's going to be more damage, you know, more infrastructure will be destroyed, and you have to, more people will be lost. Um, you have to have a different plan. And the problem is that, you know, the extreme weather that I mentioned coming up the elevator, um, is not really, we don't know yet, mm -hmm. right? It's climate change, mm -hmm. and it could be worse than we've ever seen. Yeah, that's what's so fascinating about all these different types of disasters. You can have, you know, an earthquake, which, which you have virtually no warning, uh, and then you have these kind of creeping, slow-moving disasters, like, you know, some, some, some volcano uh, yeah. you know, uh, hazards are, are, are like that, yeah. uh, or, or sea level rise, yeah. or climate change, yeah. or drought or yeah. other things that, that, that becomes the new normal right right, right and right, then we have right. to address it so this yeah. is this is not easy you have a sort of sliding scale of severity and therefore a sliding scale of effort and recovery mm -hmm. and you you build it you factor all that in that's true yes we um we take in the development of the course we take uh the latest research uh, the latest federal guidance la latest academic guidance on disaster recovery planning and planning the recovery planning generally takes up this multi-hazard approach, so you are prepared for, for anything and any scale, really. But the important part is, is having an organization, uh, roles and responsibilities in place so that you know what to do when, when the event takes place. And the organization includes all the disciplines. I mean, for example, I heard a story on MIRSA. There's a, a seven, believe this, 700,000 people die of um, bacteria, you know, of, uh, bacteria that are resistant mm -hmm. now, mm -hmm. today. Mm -hmm. And the expectation is that's going to go up by multiples right. in the next uh, 10, 20 years. Mm -hmm. So um, you know, the question is, uh, so you have, you have a physical damage because of the disaster, slow or, or fast, and now you have secondary effect. Mm -hmm. So your planning has to be very sophisticated right. and figure out you know, what else is going to happen. Are we going to have, uh, for example, some kind of epidemic come out of a right. disaster? Because of the lack of water, the lack of hygiene, the lack of food, the, the lack of medicine. Yeah. Right, right, right. So it's not just the physical structures that we're talking about recovering. It actually is also about the communities. It's uh, the livelihoods, the jobs, the economy. It's That's all job the types one, of, isn't it? Uh, of uh, uh, it is job. It is job one. But it's also about all the other activities. Uh, that we can be involved in, from education to religious activities to social activities. All of those types of activities would also be uh, impacted in, in the case of a very serious yeah. disaster. To recreate a society, That's right. uh, hopefully right. a better one, but mm -hmm. you know, first we got to get people to work again. Right, right. Yeah. So when we surveyed the literature on this, when we looked uh, across the country, we found that a real gap was in terms of recovery planning. So that's why we jumped into it and we said, we're going to work on recovery planning, and that's something that's going to be good for the nation, good for Hawaii, and then also good for, for our center. And what we do, try to do is that we, we, we try to work on projects that help us in Hawaii. So one of the things that we have is a very good, robust partnership with the Waikiki Business Improvement District Association. Uh, and with them, we did a joint project uh, over the past uh, year or so on doing a pre-disaster recovery uh, plan for Waikiki. Uh, there's been a lot of research that has been conducted that shows that those communities that engage in pre-disaster recovery planning are better off when a disaster strikes. They, the, the, the recovery is faster, it's the quality of the recovery is better, and there's a lot of evidence to support that. And so, What is it? 
What is a pre-disaster recovery plan? Well, that's what we're going to talk about, uh, okay. in fact. Uh, Ooh, wow. Yeah, yeah, that means yeah. we've got to take a short break. Okay. We'll come back. We're going to launch right into that. We're going to okay. cover some more of your slides. All right. Lots of slides. Okay. We'll be right back. You're watching Think Tech Hawaii, which streams live on thinktechhawaii.com, uploads to YouTube, and broadcasts on cable OC16 and Olelo 54. Great content for Hawaii from Think Tech. Living in this crazy world, so caught up in the confusion, nothing is making sense for me and you. You're watching Think Tech Hawaii, 25 talk shows by 25 dedicated hosts every week, helping us to explore and understand the issues and events in and affecting our state. Great content for Hawaii. From Think okay, we're back. We're live with, we're with Carl Kim and Rob Poro, and we're talking about disaster recovery planning, and that means job number one is getting the economy back on track, and they are working on a plan vis-a-vis -vis Waikiki, Waikiki uh, Improvement District. Uh, so that Waikiki can recover after a disaster, whatever kind of disaster. Really important because that's the engine of our economy. And if we don't recover the economy, whoa, what, you know, what do we do all day? And how will we earn money? And how, how will our life be? We, in order to move the society ahead, keep everybody occupied properly and, and keep the, you know, the goods and services flowing, we have to have an economy. So tell us about the plan. Okay. Uh, if we can turn to the slide. We're going to go, go to the third slide now right. and let's see what it is. This, is. this is kind of an overview of the project, which had really four different elements to it. We did some background research. We did a risk and vulnerability assessment. We had a whole series of community engagement processes, including a survey, some workshops, some uh, working group meetings, uh, and then uh, prepared a, a, a final report, uh, which actually went through several different uh, um, drafts uh, and then uh, which provides some recommendations for this and so uh, and basically um, if, if we go to the next slide you know why we want to start with why plan for recovery uh, and I think one of the things that uh, affected us was that I think in 2015 there were 14 named 15, storms 15 named storms in the uh, Central Pacific that could have uh, could have hit Hawaii. Right, right. This is kind of an amalgam of those. Uh, yeah, I see Hawaii in the right, middle of it, right, but all right, those storms right, around there. Right. That's pretty threatening. We were lucky, huh? Right, we were lucky. Uh, and then if we go to the next next slide, um, you know, we know, uh, as you mentioned, that Waikiki is the economic uh, driver in terms of uh, visitor spending, gross state product, tax revenues. Uh, it's a. It's also a very densely populated area. There's a, some nearly thirty thousand uh, residents, uh, uh, nearly a hundred thousand visitors per day, a large concentration of jobs uh, and employees there. And so this is a very, very important uh, part of our community that we need to uh, to, to, to plan for in the event. Of also, the very vulnerable from a physical point of view, from a geological point of view, from a may I say, a coastal engineering point of view. Which yeah. takes us to the next slide and, and, Rob, uh, and, and Rob's background here. Yeah, that's right. So like you mentioned earlier, um, planning involves a certain element of predictive analysis. Um, so our, our planning project involved a vulnerability assessment where we looked at coastal hazards that may impact Waikiki. And so taking um, some of the research that's been done out of the university, um, taking some of the modeling efforts that have been done, we performed a vulnerability assessment. So overlaying um, these three hazards in particular, storm surge from a simulated category four hurricane, uh, tsunami inundation, and rivering flooding or raining uh, event, 500 year event. And overlaid that on um, the parcels in Waikiki and data that we collected from census, from the city the and county. Um, so this looks like the uh, Chip yeah. Fletcher charts out of SOAS, mm -hmm. right, with yes, those right. coastal, so, coastal inundation so charts. That's yeah. right. Those particular maps were uh, generated from a joint project we did with University of Hawaii Sea Grant. Um, sea Grant, yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. And those, again, those are extreme events. So our project focused on, on what to do, um, a roadmap, essentially, uh, of planning for one of those really big events that would pretty, pretty much shut down uh, Waikiki. Yeah. So we, we overlaid those hazards on on some of the data we had on Waikiki, um, socioeconomic mm -hmm. data, uh, land use data, 
the building data and to really identify what the hotspots were um, for each. You mean where it would be completely inundated and have a profound effect? Correct. Which areas were were most vulnerable, basically, yeah. to these particular. So it's the hazard, but also the assets that were really the the people, the buildings, the economic activity, the right, jobs. Also. Right. Right. Where it would really be damaged. I mean, damage have a long, long shadow of damage. But you know, one thing that comes to mind is there was a woman by the name of, um, it'll come back to me, Drake, uh, Susanna Drake, who came out here. She gave some lectures at the architecture school. And she's a boutique architect in Brooklyn, actually. And she went to the mayor, then Bloomberg, and she said, uh, of New York, and then she said, um, you know, you, you don't, you know, you're going to get inundated in Manhattan and all that stuff under, under the street is going to be destroyed. What are you going to do about it? And the mayor said, well, we don't know. And she said, I got a plan. I got a, an infrastructure plan. You know, it involved um, infrastructure, concrete, whatnot. I don't know exactly what barriers mm -hmm. so that, the, that inundation would be minimized, limited. And they're actually doing it in New York, which is impressive. <clears throat> so is the, does the plan talk about that? Does the plan talk about how are we going to build physical structures that will protect our assets? Mm -hmm. it, it does. It, it, as if you go, if we remember the previous slide, there's a few different elements to the project. One of them is community engagement. And so we really wanted to take input from the community in addition to the things that we know as far as uh, coastal infrastructure, coastal engineering protection, uh, things like that, and kind of come up with um, recommendations, things to consider when putting together a formal recovery plan. And, and yes, that does include uh, building uh, certain structures to protect Waikiki, uh, incorporate not, not just with concrete, but also natural type solutions. Mm, sure. Beach nourishment, for example. Sure, those are the clever ones. Mm -hmm. That's right. Yeah. So uh, recognizing that, you know, what draws people to Waikiki, what why it's the economic engine is are the natural resources the water you know, quality, the what, beach, what i so. what i what i hear is that, that you can do this you know we know we know the inundation patterns we know the assets pretty much we know people are concerned about it hotel owners would be very concerned about it um and you know the, the whole community should be concerned about it but how do you reach political will mm -hmm. to actually implement the plan mm -hmm. well our belief uh is that through stakeholder engagement and working closely with a diverse array of property owners, people that are involved in running hotels and businesses in Waikiki, as well as providing uh, essential uh, services uh, from the public sector and, and, and private so sector. So it isn't necessarily the government. It is government's part government, of it, but not the whole thing. Especially when it comes to recovery, right? Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. So that, that's, uh, that, that's one of the important lessons that we uh, take away from this, that Recovery really has to involve a broad base of uh, stakeholders that are engaged in a process. You know, we do that for first response. We have mutual aid uh, agreements. We have uh, uh, different types of uh, agreements to, to share resources. But less of that has been done for uh, recovery planning. And so that's, that's part of what, what we're trying to, to do in this. And so we conducted surveys so that we got what, what people would, would say anonymously and then brought them together and, and had uh, committee meetings and, 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 and workshops and talked about the different alternatives and designs. Uh, some of them are physical designs, some of them, but some of them involve other sorts of changes in patterns of land use and the patterns of development, the intensity of development, the type of development, and so forth. So it's a, it's a very, very interesting and uh, complex uh, problem. And I think it's much better done before an event happens rather than trying to do sure. it immediately uh, after, at, at the time you're, sure. you're, you're dealing with so many other, other things as well, too. The other good outcome of this is the studies show that if you do this and you do have uh, pre-disaster planning, you're much more likely to get more federal aid uh, as well, too, because uh, you have a plan, you have the relationship. They know you're serious. And, yeah. and, and, and so forth. It's all very healthy. Plan. Right, <clears throat> right. So that's, now, that's is that aid being affected by the current administration? Everything is being affected by the current administration. <laughs> okay. Right. But we still have to do it. Right. And you know what, uh, what comes to mind, uh, I know we want to cover some more mm -hmm. of your slides that are you know, relevant to this, but um, <clears throat> is the question of who does what. Mm -hmm. Now, I, I assume that's in the plan. Yes. But I also, but also suggest that if you say mm -hmm. that Joe Dokes 
has to do something under the plan, then A, he has to know about it. He or the people around that office, they have to know about it. And B, he has to be willing uh, and able and, you know, uh, what do you call it, committed to do it. Right. That's part of the plan too. Isn't so it? We, we took this problem and broke it up into basically three chunks. And the first, first one was authorization. Because if you don't have authorization to plan, it's just a bunch it's of just, people just, coming together and right. having a good chat like a us. Talk fast, <laughs> right. 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 So thinking about how do you authorize the plan and, and who has the responsibilities and, uh, and, and so forth. So, so that's one chunk. The second chunk is really what everyone focuses on. There's a lot of operational detail uh, to, to recovery. And, and so part of what we wanted to do to, was to bring together all of the, the different groups and stakeholders and interests and say, well, uh, uh, assuming that we have a really catastrophic event that, uh, that occurs in YTT, what are the specific types of activities and, and how can we organize these operational activities in a way that first is consistent with what the federal government wants so that we'll get reimbursed for uh, the, the costs associated with You got a slide this. on this, right? Yeah, it's yeah. called operations. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, 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 it, it, but it also helps us transition from the short-term uh, response, relief types of activities to uh, the more mid-range and longer-term uh, uh, activities. And so part of it is you have to set up a, 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 a structure for, for handling all of these, uh, uh, the, the, these different uh, elements. Uh, and, and so part of what we came up with if you go to the, the next, next slide. one, operational uh, support. So, so, yeah. so obviously there, there are concerns like infrastructure, you know, which is typically the first, you, got, you can't do anything without utilities or water or electricity or communications. You also, a big issue is debris management uh, as well too for a, for a big storm. There are other specific concerns to Waikiki related to economic activities as well as broader community services. And then we also have concerns that we don't want to ignore in terms of our natural and cultural assets and resources in this as well too. So, so this shows you some of the things that we work through uh, with uh, the with the stakeholders, with the stakeholders in, yeah. in the groups. Yeah. In, in, in but how do you, how do you deal with this though? And we only have a minute left. Yeah. But how do you deal with this? So <clears throat> so now the plan is being implemented, and Joe Dokes is he's taking his responsibility, and he comes out on the street and says, "I want you guys to do this, that, and the other thing." The public. Mm -hmm. I want the public to do this, that, and the other thing. And the public doesn't know who he is. The public says, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you want us to do those things. Why, why should we listen to you? So how do you establish the command control kind of aspect, or we'll call it the socialization aspect, so that the plan, uh, you know, accepted by people accountable, um, can actually be accepted by the public when the time comes? Mm -hmm. I mean, it starts as kind of command and control. A part of this is that we have to transition back to a democracy. We have to transition yes. back to, uh, that's part of the recovery process yes. as well too. Otherwise we have martial law or something that's like right, that, right. be none bad. But bad. the most interesting questions actually pertain to the longer term development challenge. And so that was the other thing that we thought was, I mean, everyone can say, oh yeah, we just want to build back everything exactly as it was before, exposed to the same hazards and risks, uh, actually probably worse because of the changes in the environment. Uh, or we can actually do things in a, more intelligent way, uh, build back so that we're stronger, better, uh, and so forth. And we can so, deal with the next disaster level right, a little right, better right. too. So if we go to the very last slide, you know, maybe Rob can say something about it. Uh, well, Rob, it's, it's that time now where we're coming to an end and we're, we're out of time, but I'd like you to spend a minute and just summarize all we've talked about oh, and great. give the message to the people, yeah. Well, if, if we go to the, the last slide, I think it summarizes it kind of well. Thank goodness. Um, but yeah, so kind of going back to your point of how do you get uh, the public or stakeholder to accept the plan, the important part is, is making it as inclusive as possible. And that's what we did. And so we tried to get input from as many stakeholder um, sectors as we could. And, and this, this plan here, this is purely conceptual. I need to throw that out there. Um, it's basically a result of brainstorming sessions we had with different stakeholders that recognize strategies that we can employ to reduce vulnerability, but also to improve, uh, make improvements to Waikiki. And so that's, that's kind of how we wrap up the plan, um, and we provide some recommendations as to how to move forward in the planning process. Very important, and Waikiki is the most important, but it also it suggests that this is kind of a laboratory for planning, because when you, when you finally you know, put the cap on this plan, 
and there are other areas and other things in the community physically and, and so and you know structurally through the community where we also need plans yeah. right. well thank you carl hey, carl thank kim you. he's actually the director of the n national disaster preparedness training center okay and rob Farrow, thank you very much thank you thank you